Most, most people may not have any severe symptoms until their kidney disease is advanced. However, you may notice that you feel more tired and have less energy, have trouble concentrating, have a poor appetite, have trouble sleeping, have muscle cramping at night, have swollen feet and ankles, have puffiness around your eyes, especially in the morning, have dry, itchy skin, need to urinate more often, especially at night. Anyone can get chronic kidney disease at any age. However, some people are more likely than others to develop kidney disease. You may have an increased risk for kidney disease if you have diabetes, have high blood pressure, have a family history of kidney failure, are older. Chronic kidney disease CKD, is a condition in which the kidneys are damaged or cannot filter blood as well as healthy kidneys. Because of this, excess fluid and waste from the blood remain in the body and may cause other health problems. Kidney disease is a term used by doctors to include any ABN. 1. How common is chronic kidney disease CKD? Mild to moderate CKD is very common in unselected populations. Some surveys suggested that as many as 16% of the adult population have some markers of kidney disease. Recent research suggests that 1 in 10 of the population may have CKD, but it is less common in young adults, being present in 1 in 50 people. In those aged over 75 years, CKD is present in 1 out of 2 people. However, many of the elderly people with CKD may not have diseased kidneys, but have normal aging of their kidneys. Although severe kidney failure will not occur with normal aging of the kidneys, there is an increased risk if it is combined with high blood pressure and heart disease or stroke. Medical checks can monitor this. Disease Outcome Quality Initiative KDOQI. 2. What causes chronic kidney disease CKD? There are many causes of CKD, and the most common causes are aging of the kidneys, high blood pressure and diabetes. Very few of the causes of CKD are completely curable, but may be controlled. Regular blood tests will be taken to indicate whether the kidney function is stable. If someone has markedly reduced kidney function, high blood pressure, and protein leak in the urine or associated problems such as kidney pain, a scan of the kidneys will be performed. Some people will also have tests such as a cystoscopy, flexible tube to look inside the bladder, or a kidney biopsy, a small piece of kidney is removed with a needle and looked at under the microscope. 3. Further information about possible causes of chronic kidney disease CKD. Further leaflets are available for some of the following conditions. Diabetes mellitus, this directly damages the structure and function of the kidneys and is increasingly the most common cause. Renovascular disease, renal artery stenosis, narrowing of the blood vessels of the kidney. Hypertension, high blood pressure is both a cause and a consequence of kidney failure. Glomerulonephritis, a chronic inflammation of the glomeruli, filters, of the kidneys. Genetic disorders, these are usually inherited e.g. adult polycystic kidneys disease. Urological disorders, urinary problems such as reflux nephropathy and urinary tract infections. 4. How do I know if I have chronic kidney disease CKD? In most cases CKD does not cause any symptoms, and is only detected when test results are abnormal. These may be urine tests for blood or protein, an X-ray or scan of the kidneys, or a blood test to measure kidney function. Symptoms develop slowly and do not appear until most of the kidney tissue has been damaged. The rate at which kidney failure worsens varies from patient to patient. One should not think that the absence of symptoms means that there is no further worsening of the kidneys. Regular monitoring tests by your doctor is therefore vital. 5. How is CKD diagnosed and monitored? CKD is diagnosed and monitored by either your GP or nephrologist kidney specialist on the basis of your medical history and the following tests. In the early stages of CKD people may be unaware that they have any illness and a blood or urine test may be the only way it is discovered. Urine tests. Urine will be tested to detect abnormalities especially albumin and blood in the urine. Albumin is due to chronic damage to kidneys and is measured by urine dipstick or albumin creatinine ratio ACR. 
Blood picked up by the dipstick can be due to a urinary tract infection (UTI), early inflammation (glomerulonephritis), and any urological problems. Blood tests to measure kidney function (eGFR). A test called the eGFR (estimated glomerular filtration rate) is used to measure kidney function. The eGFR is calculated by the laboratory from the level of a chemical called creatinine in the blood. A normal eGFR is about 100 milliliters per minute in young adults, so the eGFR is sometimes referred to as the percentage of normal kidney function, as the number is the same. Some young adults with normal kidneys will have an eGFR as low as 75 milliliters per minute, and this falls by about 1 milliliter per minute per year as people get older. So many healthy people aged 75 will have an eGFR of 50 to 60 milliliters per minute. Other blood tests. Other chemicals in the blood like urea, potassium, calcium and phosphate are also measured as high levels and can cause ill health. Other blood tests, hemoglobin and PTH, are carried out to detect anemia and bone disease which may occur in advanced CKD. Assessment of cardiovascular risk. People with CKD are at an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, poor circulation, peripheral vascular disease. Cardiovascular risk factors like smoking, cholesterol and blood pressure will be monitored closely and appropriate medications will be started. Patients who are on antihypertensive or lipid-lowering therapy should have renal function assessed at least annually. Scans and X-rays. An ultrasound scan will be performed to check the kidney sizes and any abnormalities. This may offer further information on diagnosis and probable further decline of kidney function. 6. What are the stages of chronic kidney disease CKD? CKD is divided into five stages. CKD stage 1, this is where eGFR is greater than 90 mLs per minute, with some sign of kidney damage on other tests. If all the other kidney tests are normal, there is no CKD. CKD stage 2, this is where eGFR is between 60 to 89 with some sign of kidney damage. If all the other kidney tests are normal, there is no CKD. CKD stage 3, a moderate degree of impairment in kidney functions occurs in this stage. This is subdivided into 3A eGFR 45 to 59 and 3B eGFR 30 to 44 because we now know that patients in 3B have increased rate of cardiovascular diseases. Heart attacks, strokes, narrowing of other arteries despite the mild impairment only a minority of patients progress to end stage kidney failure. Most stage 3A CKD can be appropriately managed in primary care and 3B patients need to be cautiously reviewed by the GP and then referred to the specialist nephrologist depending on the risk factor. Some patients need further investigation where there are indications that progression to end stage renal failure stage 5 may be likely. CKD stage 4, this is where eGFR is between 15 to 29 milliliters per minute, a severe reduction in kidney function. CKD stage 5, this is where eGFR is less than 15 milliliters per minute, when dialysis or a kidney transplant may be needed. 7. How fast will the kidneys get worse? It depends on individual patients and the causes of their CKD. It is worth noting that normal people without kidney disease lose 1 milliliter per minute a year through natural aging. The kidneys of many CKD patients above 75 years will worsen just a little faster than normal aging kidneys. They are unlikely to suffer severe kidney failure. For other patients, it is difficult to say. Your nephrologist may be able to give a rough estimate if he has access to the blood and urine tests over previous years. 8. What is the treatment for chronic kidney disease CKD? Although there is no cure for CKD, treatment is important to try to eliminate the cause of CKD and to reduce the rate of progression of decline in renal function. It is beneficial to review the diet and lifestyle to reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack. There are some things that everyone with CKD should try to do. These are Plus lose weight if overweight and take regular exercise. Plus stop smoking. Plus reduce the amount of salt in the diet in order to help control the blood pressure. Plus eat a healthy balanced diet. Plus drink about 2 liters of fluid a day, 2 liters is about 10 cups or 6 mugs. 
There is no benefit in drinking large amounts of fluid, except in people who get lots of urine infections, or in a few other special cases. Plus patients should avoid binge drinking and be vigilant in replacing extra fluid losses in hot weather and during episodes of diarrhea or vomiting. Plus consider buying an automatic blood pressure monitor to check the blood pressure at home. Plus have an annual flu jab, influenza vaccination, and have the pneumonia, pneumococcal, vaccine once. Talk to your GP about this. Plus avoid certain painkillers, non-steroidal inflammatory drugs NSAIDs such as ibuprofen. Discuss with your doctor if this is difficult. Plus patients in whom initial urinalysis reveals non-visible, microscopic hematoria should have a urine culture performed to exclude a urinary tract infection. Plus seek early treatment with antibiotics if you are prone to urine infection, frequent need to urinate, burning sensation on urinating, aches in the bladder or loin, smelly urine. Medical Information Disclaimer This video contains general medical information. The information in this video is only for educational purposes. The medical information is not advice and should not be treated as such. You must not rely on the information in our videos as an alternative to medical advice from your doctor or other professional healthcare provider. My channel Health Tips by Sha G provides valuable information on how to stay healthy and fit. You can learn about the latest health trends and tips to help you stay healthy. Health Tips by Sha G is the perfect resource for anyone looking to improve their overall health and well-being.